be this back conference will now be recorded. As well as also Aaron has hit the record button. Um, this is Sarah Crom with the Space Coast TPO speaking. I just realized I'm, I'm talking and <laughs> forgot to introduce myself. Um, so, so I'm my name's Sarah. I'm with, I'm with the Space Coast TPO. Welcome to the 2020 St. John's River to Sea Virtual Summit. We hope that everyone is healthy and well in these trying times. Today's presentation will be the St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance FDOT and County Updates, featuring Maggie Ardito, Julie Holtzhausen, Craig McLean, Heather Neville, Tim Bailey, as well as myself. <clears throat> Before we get started with today's presentation, we would like to take a moment to recognize our partners and sponsors, whom without their support today, this would not be possible. The City of Titusville, Playlanda Brewing Company, Titus Landing, Lisa Mosier with Coldwell Banker, Coast Realty, Wild Ocean Market, Bike Florida, Days End by Wyndham, Coldwell Banker, Coast Realty, Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce, St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance, Space Coast TPO, and the Florida Office of Greenways and Trails. For some housekeeping, friendly reminder that everyone is muted, and if we could Oh, my slide. Give me one second. My slide is not advancing. There we go. <clears throat> For some housekeeping, fr friendly reminder that everyone is muted and to please use the chat box to ask any questions. Questions will be taken at the end of the presentations. So we will go through all of the updates and then at the end, we'll have 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A for, for the presenters. All right, and so without further ado, I would like to introduce Maggie Ardito. And let me send the screen over to you, Maggie. And Maggie, you will have to unmute yourself. Maggie, you will need to unmute yourself. So we can't hear you right now. Sarah, it's yes. Heather Neville, can you? I don't see her in the queue anymore. Is she logged off by accident completely? She is shown up as River to Sea Info. River to Sea, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. And I see her screen. Try, try just unmuting everybody and see if she won't pop up. In the yeah. All right. All right, everyone is unmuted. Sorry, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. I think that's the name of the game, though, as everyone's switching to virtual. Maggie, can you hear me? I can hear you, and I am MA, and I'm on the phone, and I'm unmuted. So I'm not sure what the problem is. 
All right. Well, if everyone could just mute themselves then, with the exception of Maggie, since it apparently wasn't going through until now. Um, and Maggie, if you want to take it away, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Starting again here. Okay. Good to go now? Good to go. Good morning, and welcome to the St. John's River to Sea Loop Summit. I'm Marguerite Ardito, president and co-founder of the St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance. I'm happy to be here welcoming you to day one of our virtual summit series, but I'd be even happier if I was welcoming you in person to our four-day trail event in Titusville. We're all going through some of the toughest times ever, and we're proud and honored that you are soldiering on and overcoming obstacles to join us here at the virtual summit. When good times return, we encourage everyone to visit Titusville, the southernmost point of the St. John's River to Sea Loop and the Coast to Coast Trail, and to visit other points around the five county River to Sea Loop. Like everything in our lives, the summit is turning out very different than we envisioned it when we first started planning one year ago. We all had great expectations to be surrounded by friends and partners in a room overflowing with energy, enthusiasm, and the opportunity to reconnect with old friends and partners and to make new ones. For the Alliance, the main objective of the summit is always to strengthen partnerships and connect with people who feel passionate about trails. And right now I know it's hard to feel passionate or excited about anything. How can we be excited and passionate when we see, perceive ourselves as stuck in our home or office, unable to connect face to face and feeling stalled and unable to move ahead? But perception is everything. And to change our perception, we must change our perspective. So let's do it. Let's totally turn our perspective upside down and inside out. I'll be using the surreal art of Rob Gonsalves to emphasize some points as we move through the presentation. I love this unique perspective of the world that totally fits, flips our perspectives and our perception. We can see our world with completeness and clarity. The details are there, but we can rise above them and see the far horizon. In this world, we're not stuck in isolation. We are safe in our own environment and suddenly able to see our situation in a new way filled with greater opportunity. We're not stalled. Our progress is not interrupted. We're freed from distraction and able to focus on the brink of possibilities and progress. With our new clarity, we understand that we're not distanced like stars in the cosmos, but we're people moving toward a shared goal. We have all the wizardry and technology at our fingertips, although it might take some time to tame, to tame it. And since this is our first presentation of our Serial Virtual Summit, I hope you will please be tolerant of our technical glitches, which we've already had some. But once we're empowered, we can connect in a variety of ways that can be even more meaningful and productive than face-to-face -face encounters. So it's time to elevate our vision. The purpose of the summit is to reignite that passion and to get people excited again about the future of the loop and about helping fulfill the promise of the loop and making Florida more bike walk people friendly. Do any of you have the feeling as I do that the world has stopped spinning so fast that we're in a lull, a pregnant pause where we have the opportunity to elevate our vision and rise above the distraction? Because what's the opposite of distraction? It's traction. Let's seize this opportunity to regain our traction and accelerate our progress. This forced distancing has provided a unique opportunity to re-examine, refresh, reinvent, and revitalize our approach and our priorities. In the grand scheme, we're rarely given this opportunity to socially distance, so let's not they, uh, waste it. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves what we already know but sometimes forget, why trails matter. This is what we call our trail benefits wheel, to remind ourselves of all the ways that trails matter to each of us and our, our communities and the planet. I'm going to spin the wheel really rapidly now. Environmental sustainability to reduce air pollution and increase environmental awareness. 
equitable active mobility for all ages, abilities, and economic conditions. Low impact, high value tourism. Economic development, the ability to attract residents and visitors and dollars that stay local. Health, wellness, fitness, and quality of life for ourselves and our communities. Community building, more interaction, relationships, and partnerships, and community and individual safety. More people out of their cars and make life safer for everyone. Remember, it's more than infrastructure. It's our way of life. Every time we help, help make our infrastructure more bike walk people friendly, we improve the quality of life for everyone. These are benefits we can all feel passionate about. Everyone, not just in the five counties around the loop, but also everyone in every county that is or hopes to be connected with the loop. Long distance trails provide benefits not just to long distance cyclists, but to everyone who lives or visits near the loop. Each of us can, should feel passionate and motivated to work toward fulfilling the promise of the loop. These benefits can come with any trail, any long distance destination trail, but especially true with one that connects smaller towns and rural areas with important historic and natural attractions. The loop follows the route from the Coast to Coast Trail, all the way from Titusville to DeBerry. It connects to the Palatka to Lake Butler Trail, the Heart of Florida Trail, and the entire route from St. Augustine to Titusville follows the route of the East Coast Greenway from Maine to Key West. And the north leg of the loop follows Adventure Cycling Southern Tier routes from San Diego. And these both follow US Bike Route 1 and 90. So the loop is one of the best connected trails and when all are complete, you will literally be able to connect to the entire country. Because of that, it has the potential to bestow the full array of benefits. I'm not going to go into the detail of each of the benefits because you all know them, but I want to call out the health and wellness benefits since that's been on all our minds. While we can't claim that trails can cure COVID-19, there is evidence that strong, healthy lungs, heart, and body increase our resistance to all forms of contagious diseases. And we know that people will exercise more if, uh, if it's available, enjoyable, convenient, and safe. Cycling and walking and jogging have been proven to mitigate and prevent a lot of the ills of society, including obesity, diabetes, heart problems, Parkinson's, autism, the, the, the effects of aging and even mental problems. So trail and trails can help with, with all these problems, but only if they are well connected, well advocated, well promoted, well supported, and well integrated into their communities. And that's where the Alliance comes in to make sure the loop is well known, well connected, well advocated, well promoted, well supported, and well integrated into our communities. As most of you know, last month marked the four year anniversary of the loop's designation as one of the two top priority Florida sun trails. The loop as an idea is much older than that, at least 15 years old, but March 16, 2016, marked the moment it became an idea whose time has come. We formed the Alliance right after the loop was awarded uh, this designation with the mission to advance, advocate, support, promote, and protect the loop. In short, to fulfill the loop's pro promise. The reality is the loop is now 43% complete and it's our mission to get it completed, used, recognized, and recognized both locally and globally. So the Alliance is also celebrating our four year anniversary and we're also taking this time to rethink and reprioritize. So what does the loop do? Here are just a few of the things and I'm again, I'm going to spin them through them really quickly. Organize trail events, develop interactive printed maps for trail use and promotion, act as the loop's voice to raise awareness, develop and maintain our website, 
at rivertosealoop.org. Uh, have a vi maintain a vibrant social media presence. Publish our in the loop newsletter to 1,200 recipients. Make presentations to organizations and different venues around the loop. Collaborate on loop branding, logos, and graphics. Design and erect kiosk signs and t-shirts and loop gear, obtain grants and raise funds, monitor and contribute to routing studies, advocate and develop champions, organize stakeholder workshops and summits, help communities recognize and leverage the benefits of the trail, promote and support related organizations and present regular two-hour seminars at REI and Winter Park about the loop, trails in general, and cycling. We do all this with few, with no staff, few volunteers, and limited funding. So it's no wonder we sometimes experience a degree of burnout. If we're to continue fulfilling our mission, we need partnership, more participation, and more support. If you're wondering what you can do to help, there are plenty of opportunities. Any organization is invited to partner with us to include the Alliance in your plans and communications, support us on projects, to help us raise the awareness uh, of the loop by using the correct names. For example, although it's long, spring to spring trail section of the St. John's River to Sea Loop. Or when you're talking about the coast to coast, say the coast to coast trail and the St. John's River to Sea Loop shared route. And list the Alliance, of course, as a partner on your website. Uh, as, a, as an individual, we invite you to become an advisor to contribute your knowledge, expertise, ideas, and contacts, and to help us set direction for the Alliance. And that would be a path toward uh, serving on the board of directors. To be a correspondent, to send us updates for social media, be an ambassador, to speak and write to your own local organizations, and we're happy to provide material for this, and to be a volunteer. Every one of the tasks that I mentioned on the previous slide, we can use volunteers on and to help us identify potential grants, help with fundraising and events. We never stop working for the loop. We think we're building more than a trail and we're, we're planting and building for the future of our communities. We believe that each one of us holds a piece to the big picture and that by working together, we can all become game changers to make in the movement toward a better, safer, healthier, and more prosperous future. Uh, we, to assure that we have a strong voice for the loop, we invest a lot of effort into maintaining our online presence. We have a very strong website full of current material and important GIS maps. We have a Facebook page uh, with updates every day and another Facebook page uh, about um, bicycle advocacy and trail advocacy in general. And we have a meetup page to attract more people to our event. We believe that putting the loop on the map and bringing it to life is one of the most important things we can do in raising awareness for the loop. So people can see what's already on the ground and can envision what's to come. So we have lots of interactive maps. We have ArcGIS maps, we have Google Maps, we have story maps that list the trailheads and camping, and we have maps to support our event. So we have all kinds of maps. In addition, we now have a detailed printed map of the entire loop, complete with a list of trailheads with their address and facilities. Production of this map was enabled by grants from Visit West Volusia and uh, REI Co-op Winter Park. Last year, we designed and constructed a kiosk and developed a map highlighting sites and attractions near Deltona and Enterprise. The kiosk is on the loop at the corner of Jacob Brack, Rock and DeBerry Avenue. This year, we are working with the city of DeBerry to develop one panel of a three panel sign at DeBerry Station. The other panels will feature the River of Lake Heritage Corridor Scenic Byway and the city of DeBerry. The kiosk and sign panel are supported by a grant from REI Co-op in Winter Park. One of our members, Edith Kolbach, 
who is a German travel writer, has updated and expanded her book, Bike Trails in Central Florida, and this is now available at local bike shops. Uh, we just completed our um, biggest annual event, the Spring to the Springs Family Fun Ride. And I'd like to show you some images from that event so you can get a feel for it. We had record a crowd of over 80 people, more than twice last year's attendance. Uh, and as you can see, we had a great drawing with generate, uh, generous prizes donated from J, uh, JC's Bike Shop, REI Co-op, Ed Sherman, and many others. Um, and we had enthusiastic participation from people of all ages and abilities on all kinds of equipment. And that's just the point. Trails are for everyone. Uh, we now have our great new t-shirts available on our website and also the detailed printed maps I told you about. We're sold out at the moment of our uh, cool cooling bandanas after donating 80 to the trail ride participants, but we expect to be ordering more. Uh, so we're all building more than just a trail. We're building connections and communities. As Ryan Gravel, the prime mover behind the Atlanta Beltline says, it's more than infrastructure. It's our way of life. It makes Central Florida where we want to live. Of course, fulfilling the promise of the loop takes strong collaborative synergistic partnerships in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. And the point of this graphic is that there's a vast number of potential partners, but exploration and relationship building takes time. And we found ourselves stumbling down a lot of uh, blind alleys, encountering obstacles of all kinds. 
Uh, and the worst kind is passive resistance because you just don't know when to quit. Um, but it's time to convert, start converting obstacles to opportunities. And by, be, by being selective, we've been very lucky to have nurtured several strong partnerships in each sector, but this remains an area ripe with opportunity for improvement. Establishing and strengthening partnerships and relationships is one of our top priorities for summits and workshops, and we have high uh, hopes for the outcome of this summit. We had particularly lofty goals for uh, the action planning workshop scheduled for day two. We looked at the workshop as a time to elevate our vision and lay out a roadmap for the trail ahead. I know everyone is disappointed that the action planning workshop has been deferred, and no one is more disappointed than the Alliance. We had hoped to emerge as a well-recognized organization with stronger mutually beneficial partnerships that would position all of us to better fulfill our missions. Like many things, that event has been postponed by our current pandemic, but we're hopeful that when it does occur, it will be even more successful and interactive and more lasting with more lasting and significant outcomes. Each of the action planning topics was important to the loop and to the alliance, marketing and promotion, partnerships, funding, maintenance, and management. I look forward to leading the round table on partnerships. I had the opportunity at last week's East Coast Greenway Summit to, prevent, to present a webinar on raising a nonprofit from concept to adolescence and how partnerships can make the process easier and more effective. I believe Partnerships are important to all of us who care about the promise of the Florida trail system. So what is the future of the trail ahead? I'm not gonna spend much time on plans and progress because each county is going to uh, talk to you about that in the next session. I just want to point out some exciting future possibilities. In the North, there is enormous potential as the loop connects the overflowing tourist destination of St. Augustine to the rural parts of Florida and the developing trail system in Putnam County. It will also connect St. Augustine by bicycle with the beautiful beach towns to the south. This will spread the excess tourism from St. Augustine to the smaller communities where slow moving environmentally friendly bicycle tourism will bring untold benefits and bring desperately needed tourist dollars to small towns and local businesses. In the South, the future of the trail ahead is especially bright. In a year, many of the gold gaps in Volusia will be filled, opening the region to a rich flow of bicycle tourism. There will be opportunities for day trips and multi-day tours of several days to a week or more, exploring the natural and historic wonders of De Leon Springs, the land, Blue Springs, Orange City, DeBerry, Deltona, and Enterprise, and all the way to Edgewater, and Titusville. It will also connect the Coast to Coast Trail all the way to west of Claremont and to the other trails in the greater Orlando area. We see the potential for the region around Lake Monroe as having special potential. The completed trail section from Osteen to DeBerry is the shared route of three iconic destination trails the River to Sea Loop, the Coast to Coast, and the Lake Monroe Loop. With increased sunrail service, the intersection of major trails at DeBerry will emerge as a world-class destination trail hub. The planned Deltona Lakeshore Trailhead will become a magnet for cyclists everywhere. My husband and I have explored the great trails of Europe and North America, and we know firsthand what cycle tourism can do for small towns and rural areas bringing not just dollars, but character, community spirit, and improved quality of life. None of us can see what's on the trail ahead. While I doubt we will be seeing skiing anytime soon on the loop, we can expect to all encounter all kinds of changes and obstacles on the trail ahead. We know there will be need for adaptation and changes in mission and direction. Choppy water and adverse headwinds will force us to adjust our sails but the Alliance will sail on and we invite everyone to climb aboard and help us navigate the trail ahead. Uh, in, in closing, I'd like to thank some of the many people who have given generously of their time 
photos and videos by Arnett Sherman, Stephanie Glisky, and Jim Ardito. Uh, Cyclist graphics by Linda Grant and Martha Hetherington, uh, showing depicting cyclists of all ages, abilities, and equipment. And finally, I'd like to pay tribute to the late great and in my opinion, undervalued can Canadian surrealist Rob Gonsalves. I quote from the lyrics of Starry Starry Night, they would not listen, they did not know how, and you all know the last line. Thank you for your attention. I'm Marguerite Ardito, president of the St. John's River to Sea Loop. I can always be reached at maggie at river to sea loop org. And now I'd like to turn the session back to our team in Titusville to continue the program and coordinate questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Maggie. That was a wonderful presentation. And you know, all of us here in Rivard expressed the same that you know, well, we wish that we were able to all see see everyone in person, that this is the, the next best thing. So I would like to now direct over to FDOT with Julie Holtzhausen and Truly, I just turned the presentation over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Julia Holtzhausen. And today, I'd like to provide the Florida DOT District 5 update on the Sun Trail program for Ms. Heather Garcia. Can everybody hear me okay? You sound great, Julie. Thanks, Sarah. All right, so today I'd like to talk to you about the progress that District 5 and our partners have made with the St. John's River to Sea Loop. And I'm happy to report that District 5 has several PD&E studies that are, now, that are now progressing towards design. So I'll, I'd like to talk to you about those starting with uh, Project 439-862-1. This segment runs along US-1 from Kennedy Parkway to Dale yeah. Avenue. It goes from Oak Hill, traverses, the trail goes from Oak Hill to Edgewater, traverses 11 miles. The PD&E um, segmenting segmented the project to three segments, and one of those segments is moving forward. The city of Edgewater is going to carry their segment, their off-system segment, um, to design and construction. And there's, uh, and design is funded in fiscal year 21 for 2.35 million, and construction is also funded following that. Next, let's move on to the Deland Gap. This is the St. John's River to Sea Loop from Lake Beersford to Grand Avenue. We the FDOT conducted a PD&E study uh, for the three and a half mile gap and determined three feasible segments. All three are moving forward and Volusia County has agreed to take on the design of all three segments in current year. 2.15 million has been awarded for the design. And next, Let's move on to the east side of the loop, uh, US-1 from State Road 44, Lytle Avenue in New Smyrna to Bevel Road in South Daytona. This section of trail is 18 miles long and the PD&E segmented this project into five feasible segments. Um, three of those segments are moving forward, uh, starting with the our Dash 2 project, it's currently in design. And then we have two other segments where the city of Port Orange and South Daytona has agreed to uh, conduct the design in fiscal year 21. And, and funding, funding has been programmed using central funds. La 
last but not least, we have the Space Coast Trail in Brevard County, Max Brewer to Atlantic Ocean. We studied this as a PD&E and the east-west segment will move forward to design. It is 10.1 miles. And the good news is it's also been funded for construction in 22. And some of you know that construction was advanced from 25 using district funds. So that is good news. We've made great progress in this section of trail. I wanted to give you a better idea of what's changed along the loop in District 5. In a two-year period, starting in October 2017 to July 2019, um, I just wanted to go over the color coding. So green, we consider existing trails. Orange on the map is program for construction. Blue means it's been programmed for a study or pre-construction phase. And red means unfunded gap. So starting with October 17, 2017, you can see, you can see a lot of red, um, a lot of gaps. We had, this is over 260 miles of trail, so it's a lot of ground to cover. Fast forward to July 2019, you can see a lot more green. You can see portions of the spring to spring trail complete, portions of the East Central Regional Rail Trail complete, and the Sweetheart Trail in Daytona, many of those segments complete. I wanted to summarize what's been complete and programmed in District 5. Most importantly, um, a key takeaway is the Coast to Coast Trail we expect to be complete in Volusia County late fall 2020. That is certainly good news. The last segment of the Coast to Coast Trail in Volusia County, which overlaps the St. John's River to Sea Loop, is Volusia County's Guys to Gobblers Road. And District 5 is working to program the, the remaining gaps in the loop. And I'm happy to report that in District 5, the loop is partially programmed with the exception of 10 miles. So the loop is obviously still in development, but we've made great progress. Any questions? Thanks so much. All right, thank you, Julie. Um, I am now gonna turn it over to Greg. Real. By the way, uh, Tim Bailey, uh, oh. I just got here. Tim Bailey is here. Oh, hi, Tim. All right, hi Craig. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Craig, let me switch over to you. And Craig will be providing an update. <laughs> Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? Yep, we can see it and you sound nice and clear. All righty, uh, just to kind of kick things off here from Palatka, um, thanks again to all the organizers keeping this work moving forward. Um, as you all know, um, all things start with a vision. Um, we've been working on this for about 30 years and are making progress slowly. I'm excited about the work um, on the St. John's River Sea Loop. The section I'll talk primarily about today is most of you know we've completed the trail basically from 
uh, St. Augustine to East Palatka, the section of the trail from East Palatka uh, to the uh, Crescent City area um, has been um, approved by management by the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners. That is awesome news we uh, received this fall through some workshops and meetings with uh, them. So with that, our applications have been submitted to uh, DOT uh, to begin that corridor assessment. Um, between East Palaika and Crescent City. You will note that we have a small section in Crescent City and a small section near the uh, Duns Creek bridge that have been completed and the uh, section of the trail over the Duns Creek um, is under construction right now. Um, so with that, um, big thank you to our Putnam County Board of uh, Commissioners for approving uh, uh, and then being the maintenance entity for that future 16 miles. Um, the next item I'll share with you is uh, our kiosk map, which is a high quality um, kind of National Park Service type standard um, kiosk. It's a two panel kiosk. You'll see our trail system kind of vision map in the middle showing things that have been constructed, things that are planned. Um, Trail-wise, um, you will also note on the right-hand side, you'll see the uh, inset um, for the St. John's River to Sea Loop. Um, this map in itself shows visitors how to connect to the regional trail systems, whether um, um, be primarily at this point, what you're seeing is the um, multi-purpose paved trail system and uh, some things like the William Bartram Scenic uh, Trail. Um, in the future, we will be adding additional um, panels that would uh, cover things like resource-based trails, hiking, and equestrian uh, throughout Putnam County as part of our uh, trail system, um, wayfinding and marketing. Um, the next item is the second of the panel. This panel uh, basically helps our visitors uh, connect to the um, rail trail connector that comes through town, which connects uh, eastward to the River Sea Loop and westerly to the Plaque Lake Butler trail system and going further uh, to the west. Um, this map has a focus. Um, it's located at our clock tower, which is kind of an iconic, um, easy to find item in the town. And um, it also is designed to help the trail users find uh, supporting amenities as well as um, downtown businesses to expand their experience. Um, I'd like to take a moment to uh, thank uh, the city of Palaka for their efforts in putting these uh, panels together and getting them installed and constructed and also um, extend a thanks to Mayor Hill and also to our trail town um, committee Chair uh, Robbie Correa with um, Revitalize Historic Palaka. She's been a great partner in this work. That covers my updates, so I will turn it back over to. All right. Thank you, Craig. All right, Heather, um, I am going to pull up your presentation. Craig, I can hear your bird. <laughs> Not my bird. Oh, someone else has a bird. I, I, my dog was snoring on a meeting Monday, so. <laughs> All right, Heather. All right, so because I'm, I'm not Rodney Cooper, I'm going to do something we do at work. So when I put my glasses on, so you all know mind what he looks like. And then here's a song. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So everybody needs to get a little bit happy. And why is that? Because we should all be super proud of everything that's being worked on. Um, I know up in our northern section uh, in St. John's County, we have had a lot of success in the last few years. And so I'm here to share that. Um, as you can imagine, 
uh, transportation projects are still definitely moving. And so Rodney's not able to be here today because we have so many projects going on. Um, in fact, we're all working about seven days a week right now. So I'm very grateful. And so I'm here today to give the update from St. John's County. Uh, my name is Heather Neville. I'm actually St. John's County's contracted bike pedestrian trail uh, uh, planner. And so I'm gonna give you an update. So let's go, uh, oh, before we go to the next slide, Sarah, I just wanna say I'm super, uh, I was so excited to see in Maggie's presentation, the Pat Northy trail sign. I thought that was super awesome. And then um, after doing a bunch of work down near Titusville uh, a couple months ago and traveling down there with my husband for work, the Max Brewer Bridge, that's just like, wow, what a dream after visiting there in college so much. So. I'm super proud of Titus School and, and uh, what a what a cool thing. And of course, shout out the putt to my, my neighbor and Craig. I talk to uh, probably more frequently than most of my girlfriends. So hi, Craig. So Sarah, without further ado, if you can go to the next slide, please. Sarah, it's I click. No worries. Um, but we have a lot of fun up in St. John's County. Uh, as you can imagine, we are we are uh, your sort of reluctant partner in the loop, uh, but we have had a lot of success recently, and that's due to the diligence of a lot of people that you see in that picture down in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, we would not be here without the diligence of her pillar. Uh, we would not be here without the diligence of, of Craig McLean. And so I just want to acknowledge those folks. We also have a several elected officials in that picture that you see. And so, um, you know, we are the reluctant partner because we are really built out. And so how we get through these next steps of the St. John's River to Sea Loop is gonna be, um, it's, it's gonna be uh, an awesome time for us after all the time spent. So what I'm gonna talk about is the completed plaque to St. Augustine Trail, which is our portion that we currently have constructed of the St. John's River to Sea Loop. Um, it's also an East Coast Greenway uh, alignment that was finished last uh, year. Uh, trail ribbon cuttings, we've had a couple of them, and then our historic jurisdictional concurrency and grant submissions, and then the work that's underway uh, up in, in our section as far as completing the loop. So next slide, please. And I apologize, Sarah's doing all my control because my son's here and we're doing homeschool. <laughs> so, um, And that picture you see in the bottom right-hand corner before it flips, that is from uh, our ribbon cutting in April last year. So it was awesome. We had Eric Draper there, everybody from the DEP. So our completed Palatka to St. Augustine Trail in St. John's County. This section of trail does sit on the uh, abandoned rail bed that stretches from the Putnam County line east to I-95. Uh, up until last year, there was two smaller segments. So you had a big gap in the middle, which created some unsafe opportunities. And so now we have a truly separated paved trail. Um, it opened early 2019. We had some delays due to the fact that there's three bridges built through a conservation area. Uh, so we had to let everything settle. Uh, we also have uh, three trailheads. We have uh, two, or I'm sorry, all three of them have restrooms, uh, water fountains, and parking. And then we also had a community hosted trail ribbon cutting uh, in April 2019. Over 300 were in attendance. We had cyclists, walkers, locals. Uh, we had folks serving food. We had farm to table, a live bar you know, people barbecuing. We were at the Main Street in Hastings. Um, and it was just a really wonderful day. That bottom left picture is a local artist. He went to the University of Florida. He's a local to Hastings. He actually lives in Hastings still. And the middle picture is the image he put together for our commemorative t-shirt. And the right picture is just a picture from the crowd that day. Um, so now if you come up to St. John's County, you can find a place anywhere on 207 in Vermont Heights or in Hastings. You can also make your way over to Palatka, which is just a few couple, uh, short miles away, and park and jump on the trail. And the next slide, please. So one of the things that is absolutely unbelievable about the last couple of years is thanks to the Florida Department of Transportation, our county was granted a fairly large sum of money to execute a feasibility study so we could get a true final alignment for the trail. Um, 
we now have an approved route. It's 31 miles from the existing terminating trail, which is the black line on the map on the east side of the picture, or on the left side of the picture, which is the west. And uh, it's gonna head north, follow an existing county road. It's gonna cross the interstate. Uh, it's going to cross a river. And then it has to cross a lot of, of our tributaries and our uh, uh, environmentally sensitive areas. And so um, we just have a really dynamic opportunity within our community. And it was um, amazing to see that after all of this time and all of these years and uh, so many trials and tribulations, we were able to not only get the alignment adopted, but we were also to get our maintenance agreements adopted. And that's been a significant hurdle for our county and our municipalities within the county to figure out how to make that work. It took a lot to get there. Uh, I'll be giving a presentation in May as part of the St. John's River to Sea Loop Summit uh, breakout session regarding uh, around the loop, the flavor, and how we have uh, kind of built momentum around a trail that doesn't really exist in our dense population areas. Uh, but what we did to get to this point was uh, we held um, several uh, public meetings. We had two large public meetings, uh, aggregate 250 attendees. Uh, we held, uh, we had community presentations and commission presentations. And then we also did something really creative where we did a public-private partnership called the Green Path Gathering and over 100 people attended that as well to talk about the fact that building trails is new construction and how does our community feel about possibly having a trail in the middle of a state park or you know, on the existing FEGN lines or you know, some of these things that we're just gonna have to manage through. With all of that being said, um, we were able to successfully get our votes that we needed by resolution from all of three of our, our commissions and then move to meet the uh, Sun Trail deadlines in December. And I'm proud to say that after a lot of hours, uh, a lot of cross sections, a lot of, um, of, of heartache a little bit, uh, we were able to take the 31 miles. We broke them down into 13 appli separate applications. And so we submitted a continuous application, uh, 13 continuous applications to the Department of Transportation in December. And we prioritized them based on uh, filling gaps where we thought there was a parallel route that would service our community and then um, continuing construction of our existing facility. And so our priority priorities were the Allen Nice, which is gonna head directly north off the existing trail to 214, that's on the left side of your map, which is the west side of 95. And then the next segment we prioritized was connecting our city of St. Augustine and our city of St. Augustine Beach. We're currently a parallel separated path that does not exist. There is a neighborhood roads, and so we are really fortunate that the Department of Transportation is working with us to ensure that, as well as the, the um, DEP, state parks, and our, our amphitheater. And so uh, that's, that's really the, the extent of the work that we have been doing. Um, and so um, as far as the future of what St. John's County has in store, um, again, on May 15th, I'll be giving a more in-depth uh, review of what we did to get so many people to attend the events and attend these public events because we also had a large public gathering for our trailhead opening this past uh, month, uh, February. And then finally, I would like to welcome you all to come up to St. John's County. Um, I know that we have all of this crazy pandemic going on, um, but as far as the north section goes, with our now open area, there's plenty of places to park along the way beyond the side yeah, of the trail. And then our big surprise yeah, is this past week we were able somebody not on me. Um, this past week we were able to open an eight-mile trail that we've kind of kept under wraps. Uh, that actually, when it's finished, is going to connect to the St. John's River to Sea Loop to the south. It's the 2209 trail, and right now you can ride from County Road 210. Um, on 2209, which is St. John's Parkway, on a beautiful, wide, paved trail uh, that's part of a new road construction project. And eventually, once the project's finished, we'll connect into the St. John's River to Sea Loop, creating that network that we all so dearly need. 
Other than that, I encourage you to all contact myself or Rodney Cooper if you have any questions about St. John's County, what we're working towards, or if you just want to come up and check out our, our beautiful trailheads and loop. And next slide, I think that's it. Let's say, is that it? And that's it. And you can't see the pictures on the bottom, but that bottom right hand picture is our one of our beautiful new bridges over Deep Creek. So you can see lots of amazing amazing flora and fauna and animals and people so that's it from st john's county all right thank you heather i would just like to remind everyone to please mute yourself so that um, we don't have noise background noise and talking over our presenters all right so tim i'm going to pull up your presentation now thank you um and so I've got unexpectedly pulled out of town uh, last night. So I'm in North, uh, North Florida. Uh, so Sarah, you're going to have to just give me the, the, the slide headers and I'll talk to each slide. Uh, I think first you wanted me to give an update on where we are in Volusia County. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, the, so I have Volusia County trails pulled up and I will click over to the next slide. So Florida by trail is your first slide. Okay, and then, so right now, what you see before you, there are three colors, right? Red, blue, and yellow? Correct. Okay, so um, that is a, uh, a, a, a map that we have gotten funding for through the TPO that goes to all of our uh, trailheads. Uh, currently on the Coast to Coast Trail, but that map will also be on the St. John's River to Sea Loop when we go into fabrication on those signs. Um, and so uh, the, in addition to that, that same map will be um, it's about 17 or 18 feet by 10 feet at our Trail Welcome Center at the Berry Hall, which is uh, currently uh, in, in construction phase, that that map is on the wall. Although we're, we've we've got some, we've got to do a, a, a reissue on that big map. But that'll be that map will be showcased in uh, Volusia County's Trails Welcome Center. Um, the next slide should be a map of the individual trail sections in the uh, that identifies which trails uh, sections are complete, which trail sections are still under construction. Is that what you got? Next slide there, Sarah. Yep, I have local and regional maps. Go Volusia yep, by okay. trail. Yep, okay, all right. So on that trail map is Volusia County section of the St. John's River to Sea Loop and the coast to coast. And so let me just give you an update on where we are in the construction phase. So right now on the, on the uh, bottom left corner of that map is Lake Monroe Park. Uh, FDOT has a project that connects uh, the trail from the toe of the St. John's uh, bridge there on 1792 that then uh, circles back towards the back end of Lake Monroe Park and then hugs Old Deland Road until it connects up to the existing coast-to-coast uh, -coast trail on the back side of Lake Monroe Park. That is almost complete. Uh, we're estimating that that'll be completed near the end of this month or early next month. And I know that uh, I was working with Robin Birdsong uh, at headquarters, um, Sun Trail, Tallahassee, um, on doing a ribbon cutting for that section. Uh, it's probably going to wait till after where the social distancing issues gets addressed, and then we'll have a ribbon cutting on that particular trail section. Um, the next trail section is from Guys to Gobblers, which is Volusia County's last section of the coast to coast. It's 3.5 miles. It's already under contract as a design build. Uh, I checked yesterday to confirm the status of completion. It looks like at this point we're going to be completed in December of this year. And so that'll, and that's kind of a key piece because folks, if they wanted to get to the other side of the trail that's completed, they have to travel on Maytown Road, which is kind of a hazardous road. Uh, so folks are really going to be excited about getting that trail section finally complete and that's 3.5 miles the next section of trail that uh, uh will be under construction here shortly is in north uh west Volusia county so on your map you'll see chuck lennon park the leon springs area uh that 
section of trail goes from Baxter, where the St. John's River Sea Loop currently ends, and then will connect up to 17 uh, up north of the Leon Springs. That's about a 1.1-mile section. Uh, it'll be done either late this year or early next year. Uh, and then we're waiting on the rest of that trail section to go up to 40. So that, and that's, I don't believe that's programmed yet. Um, the next section of trail, which I'm going to go back down the DeBerry, it's the section uh, from High Banks Road in DeBerry uh, to 1792 in Dirksen, which is right by Gemini Springs Park. It's a little over three miles. Uh, we finally got all the uh, contracts in place and all the agreements in place because there is an easement that we're traveling through on Duke Energy. Uh, this will also be a section that City of DeBerry is going to be maintaining and not the County of Volusia. So there, there is a maintenance agreement that's being approved by their city commission, and then eventually uh, the, the, the uh, maintenance agreement will then also be approved by the county council. Um, and that will be early next year is when uh, we're thinking that'll be that section will be completed. Um, OK, in terms of updates, that's kind of where we're at from from Lake Beersford North. The feasibility study is wrapping up. Uh, so we're still uh, working on the alignment. There's a lot of eminent domain issues there. So that's going to bog down things on that section. And that would be from Lake Beersford North to Minnesota, which is where the existing trail is. Uh, uh, and and so that I know that's a key portion. If Maggie's listening, I'm I'm sure she's aware of that that that's kind of a key portion that we're all trying to chase down and get completed. But right now we're we're uh, just ending the feasibility section of that. We go into eminent domain on a variety of sections there, and and then uh, we try to move into construction. That uh, my guess is we're years away on on that. Uh, okay, so next slide. Next slide is trail mile markers and emergency information. Okay. So um, we've been uh, we've, we were awarded the TPO, uh, TPO grant uh, for mile markers, for emergency markings, for the trail maps. That uh, was uh, awarded, uh, assigned a contract, uh, fabrication we're in currently right now, and we're about I don't know, say 30% done with installation. So for those of you that actually trans uh, traveled on the coast to coast section in Volusia County, you'll see a lot of those maps that we talked about early in the presentation um, come up, uh, they're up, and uh, the mile markers will uh, be following, and they'll be at half mile increments on those mile markers. It has uh, the U.S. national grid, it has the emergency contact phone numbers, it has the coast to coast logo, uh, the St. John's River to Sea Loop logo and Volusia County logo. Those informa that information is passed on to our emergency staff in Volusia County. So if someone did, does get into a situation, uh, you know, heart attack or stroke or something like that, uh, the, those mile markers uh, with those emergency markings help the emergency responders know exactly where to go and where the extraction points are, the nearest extraction point. Uh, that help, that, that's helping us out a lot in terms of keeping folks safe. The other thing that's not on that slide, though, that's kind of important is because of the COVID-19 situation we're currently in, we also put up share the trail signs. Uh, these are temporary signs. They're on in half-mile increments. It has a lot of the CDC protocols of what, uh, how you're supposed to uh, keep yourself safe, you and the other trail goers. It, it has the six-feet distance. It has, you know, how you're supposed to pass. So there's about seven or eight different uh, guidelines that are on those share the trail. Uh, and that, those are, are, are up now. We have also have share the park uh, signs that are in all of our parks. I think there's 410 signs like that uh, up throughout our Lucy County Parks and Trails and Preserves. What's the next slide? It is. Any questions? So, um, as I said, we are going to hold questions till the end of the presentations. Thank you, Tim. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, nope, I think that's good. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my screen now and give you the Brevard County update. Regretfully, Flagler was not able to join us today. All right, so I'm Sarah Crom. I'm the Multimodal Program Specialist for the Space Coast TPO. Our big accomplishments this year was 
was the St. John's River to Sea Loop Summit is a, a lot of the time that we um, spent this past year was working, you know, with all of our organizations down here in Brevard to and with Maggie, with the St. John's River to Sea Loop and Craig and Heather and so many people that are on the line right now um, is that was really our big focus this year as we um, we normally hold bi-monthly North Brevard Trail um, collaborative meetings and those meetings turned into St. John's River to Sea Loop Summit planning meetings. So this was our, our big thing that we were working on. But anyways, to move into other items, um, and for those that aren't familiar with um, the North Brevard Trails, we have three converging trails that all line up together. So the St. John's River to Sea Loop Trail, the Coast to Coast, as well as also the East Coast Greenway. And so we have a lot of overlap and um, within the routes. <clears throat> So some of the items that have been taking place this year is we are moving forward with our Federal Lands Access Program grant that we received for a parish park trailhead that would be on the Brewer Causeway. So this lines up on both the Coast to Coast Trail as well as also the St. John's River to Sea Loop. And basically it would take the Causeway Park that's already there, which is right now a sand parking lot is essentially what it is and create it as more of a formal trailhead along the trail that that is currently already there that was the trail was finished construction in october of this year and so um, the construction of the park right now it's at about 60 percent planned so these are concept a conceptual rendering that you see on the right and then um, kind of the plan stock cover on on the left um, so they are at 60% plans right now, and then construction funds will be available in, f in fiscal year 21, so not too long from here. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to wrap up design and get on constructing our new trailhead. And so that's one of the big exciting items. The other item is that we finished the pd &E on the Space Coast Trail. And so luckily, as Julia told you, we were able to advance funding for design and construction on the east-west portion, but now we need to work on that north-south section. And it's going to continue to take the multiple agency cooperation that we've been going through on this section of trail. For those that are unfamiliar with it, this is um, on NASA property that is managed by the Maryland National Wildlife Refuge and Canaveral National Seashore. So we're working with three different federal agencies as well as also FDOT um, and the TPOs in order to, to accomplish this, this trail and segment of the St. John's River to Sea Loop. So we'll continue to work with the coordination and work with NASA on getting that north-south section done. We've also had trail rides and events. So annually, the Titusville Chamber of Commerce has started their Gear It Up, Ride It Down event. That was supposed to, this year was supposed to be um, the final day of the trail trifecta. So after the, after the, the Saturday after the summit. Um, and so it will be rescheduled and, and they will continue to have their annual ride. They also, the Coast to Coast Bike Shop at the Titusville Welcome Center continues to be very active and busy in the community. They hold weekly rides, they do bike and brews, they, they're just really booming and, and doing a wonderful job of servicing the community and providing opportunities for advanced riders and also newbies to get their feet wet and figure out what trail life is all about. <clears throat> and of course we get some, some fun rides out here on the Space Coast. So you can see down there, those are the coast to coast um, workers and owners in front of the vehicle assembly building out on NASA property. So our next big item that we are going to start focusing on is the North Brevard Wayfinding Plan. It is going to be a cross-jurisdictional cohesive plan because basically we, as I previously mentioned, we, we have trail that's on NASA property with two federal agencies managing it. We have the city of Titusville as well as also Brevard County Parks and Rec. All, all managing different parts of the trail. And the plan is, is that we want to be able to have a cohesive network of wayfinding and amenities across all of Brevard because a, a rider is, doesn't 
know when you cross, doesn't necessarily know when you cross from Brevard County into Titusville or, you know, Titusville when you cross into that NASA property is, you know, it definitely, they, they want a cohesive ride, not a segmented things change. Now I don't know where I am because the wayfinding. Um, and so basically what the plan is going to include is a wayfinding amenities plan, a sponsorship package where then the municipalities can actually take and pursue funding to implement the wayfinding and amenities. And it'll have cohesive branding. So we're definitely going to be looking over at Volusia because they already did the really great job of this. But basically get a cohesive brand for that encompasses all three logos that we need to. Um, and we will be, I will be issuing a notice to proceed on that in December of this year. So between now and then we'll start scoping and meeting with the municipalities. So that is what Brevard County has to update. And now that we've finished all of our presentations, I am going to open it up for questions. If you do have a question, if you could please either type it in the chat box or state your name in the chat box and we can call on you. This is Pat Northy, and I can't find the chat box. Oh, okay. Hi, Pat. How are you? Fine. How are you? Can, can I make a real quick statement? Um, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, That this this trail work, and uh, I keep telling people we're, you know, a 25-year overnight success story, but, but I will tell you this has been incredibly invigorating for me as somebody who is, uh, who was on, you know, knee-deep in it and now just kind of a running around a little bit with it because I'm retired, but it is so exciting to see all of the work that is being done, making the the river to sea loop and the coast to coast real and hopefully heart of Florida coming on board soon. Um, thank you all for what you've done because you're working so well together and we are making such progress. It is just a, amazing to me to hear all the progress that's being made in the last, I guess the last couple, 18 months, couple of years, and congratulations to all of you. You're going to be leaving a legacy for a lifetime of, uh, for, for many lifetimes, for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, and thank you for that. Thank you, Pat. It's always great to hear from you and your insight with all of your years of experience. Well, I'll just give it just another minute to see if anyone else has any questions, comments. Hey, Sarah, it's Heather. Hey, Heather. Hey, is is uh, Robin or Barney still on the line by any chance? I can't. I see Robin. Oh, there he is. Barney's there. Yeah, still here. Um, yep. Can, can you give um just a brief or however long you want <laughs> uh, comment on the timeline as far as this year of what notifications we can look for like uh what gets picked uh what's not picked what do we need to be doing locally as far as relationship with the dot goes on on segments that sounds like a robin question <laughs> Well, I was reading. I was reading the stimulus package, and there's some unique opportunity um, there. So I'm just trying to make sure all of the all of our ducks are in a row. I don't know if Robin's still on or not. Yeah, I see in the chat box he is. Robin, do you have audio ability? Um, well, I can tell you what, what we're doing as a district towards towards the stimulus is this, the stimulus package had a lot of requirements to it. One of the requirements being for us is that the project already has to be in design. If it's in design, it can be then submitted for potential construction funding. 
in the St. Johns County and the, the Platinum County in our area, neither neither of those counties have projects that are currently in design. However, if we get other projects funded, such as the projects over in Bradford County, what that does is that then frees up the, the Sun Trail or the Transportation Alternatives funds that can be then used in the Putnam and St. Johns County area. And so right now we have four four trails we're submitting for stimulus. I want to say it's on the order of um, $25, $30 million worth of projects. And I shouldn't say they're submitted, they're, they're shortlisted to be submitted along with, with, of course, many, many highway projects as well. Uh, but if those projects are selected, um, that does free up future funding. Okay. And then are you, do you guys have de uh, rollout dates yet for anything that was submitted last year, like months or you do it and everything's probably pushed a little bit? Uh, the current timeline we're working on is is the submittals because all the applications that were submitted to us are due to Robin and Central Office on April 15th. Um, at that time, it goes into to her arena and I'm sure it'll be several months um, of vetting all the projects that were submitted statewide. And I don't know the exact timeline of when there's going to be selected um, or announced, I should say, which ones will be uh, put forward. Thank you. All right. So to wrap it, thanks for all the good conversation here at the end. And so to wrap it up, I would like to remind you that we do have seven more weeks of webinars. Um, they will have various different subject matters and speakers and um, from across the state. And so we would like to encourage you to log in um, there. They're always at 10. We have um, one day that's a Friday. Otherwise, it's always the same same time slot. So thank you to our amazing presenters for taking the time to give your presentations today and for all your continued work, effort, and support that you put into the loop and trails. Once again, we would like to recognize our sponsors, the City of Titusville, Playlander Brewing Company, Titus Landing, Lisa Mosier with the Coldwell Bank Banker Coast Realty, Wild Ocean Market, Bike Florida, Days End by Wyndham, Coldwell Banker, Coast Realty, Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce, St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance, Space Coast TPO, and the Florida Office of Greenways and Trails. So we hope you will join us next week, and thank you again for coming. Hi, Laura.